All right, hello again, Honors 410. It's been a while. Um, so thank you all so much for all your hard work during the workshop portion of this course. Um, this is gonna be a really short video lecture, probably only about five minutes or so. Um, this is misspent a little bit of catch up and kind of reminders. Um, participation in the discussion below is not required. So um, I'll leave it open in case there are questions or things people wanted to say that might be helpful for the group. Um, but, but know that you're not required to participate. Everyone gets uh, participation uh, and engagement credit automatically for today's class. Um, so the things I wanted to touch base on are um, a reminder that you should be working on your revised draft. So that due date's gonna be coming up very soon. Um, and to give you some ideas of just kind of what, what to do at this point. Um, so when you're thinking about uh, revisions at this point, um, you wanna be thinking through um, how you can use the feedback that I gave you, um, that's probably the more obvious part, as well as how you can use the feedback from your peers. And in that regard, um, one thing I wanna advise is knowing you don't have to take everyone's feedback or at least not take every everyone's feedback equally. Um, when you're looking at the, the comments that you got during the workshop process, um, you want to be looking for trends, as in um, if just one person is saying something that seemed to kind of miss the point of what you were going for, you really don't need to take that advice. Um, but if a whole bunch of people are telling you the same thing or at least pointing out the same issue, um, it's kind of hard not to listen to that at a certain point, right? So um, even if you don't entirely agree with what people are saying, um, if people are all kind of calling attention to a specific scene, a specific page, a specific choice, um, you don't have to take their advice on how to fix it necessarily. Um, but you do want to be thinking about um, what can I do to address this? So clearly something isn't clicking with a high volume of, of you know, readers who are pretty smart people. Um, occasionally, occasionally it might be that truly you, you feel it's just really off base and you're really committed to an idea. Um, communicate with me about those things. If, if you've got something where um, you just feel like it has to be a certain way or there's a change you're really resistant to making, because um, it could be that it's the right choice, right? Because um, th there are times when, when an author, when an artist in general has a really specific vision that the broader um, you know, uh, audience might not pick up on at first. Uh, I, I'm open to that, but, but again, th thinking through that, usually if a bunch of people are saying the same thing, uh, that can be a cue that it needs some sort of attention, some, some way of addressing that. Um, but look through all that feedback. Um, and similarly, it might be that you find some diamonds in the rough, a feedback where um, you know, just one person says it, um, but it really resonates with you. And so don't be scared to take that, right? That, that could be useful feedback just from an outside source. Um, so uh, otherwise, things you can think about for, for revision and things that I'll be kind of looking for. Um, again, with the revisions, the biggest thing I'm looking for is that you've clearly invested effort. You've clearly made an attempt to address some of the feedback from myself and from your peers. Um, so things you can experiment with include um, structure of your story, right? Um, th things in terms of um, is it told in a straightforward linear fashion? Are there flashbacks? Um, are there um, changes in point of view? Things along those lines. Um, sometimes playing with those things can, can open up a story and at minimum will, will certainly demonstrate that you've put considerable thought and effort into your revision. Um, things with the order the story is told in. That, that Some of that reference back to flashbacks as I mentioned earlier. Um, but you know, do, should we play with putting scenes in a different order? Either um, by playing with, with kind of the time frame and, and how the story moves. Um, or even chronologically, mo moving certain events up in some stories uh, can make a really positive difference. Um, considering the point of view the story is told from, um, is it first person? Is it third person? Is it coming from the right uh, first person, uh, if that's the case? Um, sometimes that, that could open some things up. Um, so playing with all these things, not being afraid to cut things out um, if there are pieces, um, scenes, moments, characters even um, that aren't really pulling their weight in the story, you might find some benefit to cutting those things out. Um, also, don't be afraid to expand, right? So you had four to six pages for the workshop draft. You have five to ten pages for the revised draft. Um, so that is quite a bit of room to, to play with this, to cut out some big pieces, to add in some big pieces, to just continue the story. And in some cases, I think that would probably be the right call. We didn't feel like we had the full story 
yet. Um, so you take advantage of, of those opportunities. Uh, and also remember, you can include a process memo with this. It's not required, but if you did want to include up to a page where you just kind of address uh, what choices you made and why, that, that is all fair game. But uh, I encourage you to refer back to the original prompt for the assignment. Remember the uh, workshop draft, workshop uh, comments or discussion, and uh, revised draft were all included in the same prompt there. Uh, if I remember, I will include that PDF in this discussion for easy reference, but if not, just know it is in the assignment folder as well. Um, but okay, and then with all that, one other note I wanted to make for today is just on the last day of class, I will give the opportunity if you would like to share your revised draft with the class, um, just to uh, participate in the discussion and include um, an upload of your file, of your revised draft. This is completely optional, no credit attached to it, no extra credit attached to it. Um, I know sometimes students make really bold changes or big expansions or whatnot um, and find that, that they're, they're proud of it. They wanna share it with their class classmates or generated a lot of discussion and big questions that you want to kind of resolve for folks. Um, so please feel free to share that. Um, but otherwise, um, if we were meeting in person today, um, this would be primarily a work day. So where I'd say bring your laptops, bring your notebooks, whatever you use to um, to compose uh, and, and take the time here and ask questions, work with your peers if you need to, so on and so forth. So similarly, I'm giving you today otherwise. There was no reading assignment for today, um, no required participation in the discussion. Uh, please use this time to your advantage to apply to the revised draft, especially for those of you who are relatively late in the workshop process. Um, it could really use that time to your benefit. But okay, I'll be back next time um, with a more traditional video lecture, probably still a relatively short one, um, but to carry on with the assigned readings on the syllabus, we are back in the McBee book um, with the story. Uh, let me consult with my notes here for a moment. I believe it's R Ruth's Red Ale that we're up to at this point. So I uh, will go ahead and discuss that tomorrow. All right, thanks everyone. I'll see you then.